great. Well, I say this so many times, but thank you so much. It really means a lot to me that you would spend your Sunday with me. Uh, whether you're a part of our church or whether you're watching this um, some other time, or whether or not you're just kind of curious about what's going on, we uh, certainly want to welcome you to Bain Chapel PH Church on Facebook Live. And we are continuing uh, and doing part two of a sermon series uh, called The Real You. Called The Real You. Not the fake you. Not the you or me that we try to put out there um, for people to be impressed or for people to kind of look at us. Um, we're talking in this sermon series about the real you. And, and just so you know about the big idea from this series or, or what it really means, it really just boils down to this. It, it's this idea here that the real you is the only you that matters. The real you is the only you that really matters. And, and the reason why I talk about the real you is because, you know, for some of us, it's, it can be so easy um, to, to create different versions of ourselves. We have a, a work version, you know, and we get around our coworkers or we're around our boss. So there's, a, there's a version of ourselves, you know. We, 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 we like to appear like we're having it all together, like, like we know what's going on. But then there may be another version of us that is at home. People may be different from work than their home, and, and, and it's like another version of them. They become someone else, or, or maybe when they go to a sporting event, or where, maybe when they go to some other form of entertainment, it's like a whole other version of themselves comes out. But really, when you think about it, there really is only one version of us, and, and, and it's really just the real us. And the real us is important. Our personal character is so important. And I wanted to spend some time looking at ways we can see who the real us is. Really just looking at your life, looking in the mirror and saying, okay, who am I really? What are the things that I'm really? Because here's the thing. Jesus loves you, but he does not, look, he does not love or even really like the alternate versions of you. He only loves the real you. He only died for the real you. So however you really are, the real you is the only one that matters. And I want us to take a look at that. Now we uh, you know, started this last week, and you can go on our website, beingchapel.com, and you can watch uh, Sermon 1 in this particular series. But the first thing I, I talked about was temptation, right? Because you know, we might make good decisions when we're in front of people or when we're out, you know, at work or, or you know, just outside of our, our daily lives. But when we're by ourselves, how we handle temptation, how we handle the struggle, that is a part of the real us. And our character matters when we're all alone. Our decisions uh, to do what's right or do what's wrong, that really matters because that builds the real us. And this morning, I want to continue on that, and I want to talk about something else that deals and builds the real us. And that is just this simple idea of promises. It's just this simple idea that, that yes, you know, um, we say certain things, uh, we, we, you know, agree to certain things, we commit to certain things, but there's something unique, there's something special about promises, you know, think think about this. You know, um, maybe we, we think about bad promises, but but I, I came across a story that I thought was pretty awesome. Um, around the Vietnam War, uh, there was this girl, and and she had this idea that she was going to get some bracelets for POWs. It was kind of a way um, that you could remember those that had been you know lost in action or maybe uh, missing in action. And she bought these bracelets. She bought one for her, her brother, and her mom. And on the bracelet, it had the name of a soldier or someone connected to the Vietnam War somehow, some way. And, and this is what she told, you know, the people she gave the bracelets. You know, um, don't take the bracelet off until you know what happened to the person whose name is inscribed on it. So, you know, keep up with it. Now, um, through the, you know, Vietnam War and, and all of that happened... Um, for this girl, her name is Janice, her and her mother, they, uh, you know, had those gentlemen that were written down on their um, wrists that they came back. And so they, they sent off the bracelets. But Bill, the gentleman that was a part of all of this, Janice's brother, uh, Bill didn't have the person that, whose name was inscribed on his bracelet come back. 
And, and so, you know, he, he, I guess he just, you know, decided, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure this out. Well, years went on, and Bill didn't really know what had happened to the gentleman that was inscribed on his bracelet. But he, he never took it off. He, he kept it with him for decade after decade. But, of course, as many of you know, one of the awesome things about the Internet, one of the things that is really cool is that it can connect people. Um, and years, years later, I mean years later, um, Bill came across and, 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 you know, maybe discovered who might be this person that was written, his son. And sure enough, um, many decades later, 46 years later, Bill was able to get in touch and, and ask the son, hey, do you want this bracelet? And of course the son did. And so Bill sent off the bracelet. Can you imagine what that had to be like, learning the story maybe uh, for you know, this person's son? And, and, and they get that bracelet and they're like, wow, this is so special. This guy made a commitment. He made a promise. And for years and years and years, he kept up with that promise. He never took that bracelet off until he mailed it off to the family of the soldier or the person it belonged to. How amazing is that? See, a promise kept, when, when we keep our promises, it is a precious gift, right, to someone I mean, that bracelet had to be a precious gift. It, it, it's really incredible. It's amazing. But as you were, you know, well know, and I know, a, a promise that's not kept, a promise that's broken, it always does damage. And in a best case scenario, it's a little damage. It's, it's not that big of a deal. Sometimes we promise things and it's, you know, it, it, we may not come through, but it's, it's really not that big of a deal. But in the worst case scenario, a broken promise can be devastating. The perfect example of this is in marriage. A broken promise that are said in vows, when that's broken, it can be devastating. But whether you keep your promises and whether you break your promises, however you treat them, that is a part of the real you. That builds you, because there's something that, that is so important that we need to understand about promises, and that is this simple idea. Promises build trust. And I don't know if I can overemphasize how important trust is. Trust is like the lifeblood of our relationships. It's like the currency in, in, in a way of our relationships. When I trust someone, and, and let me just use my wife, because I don't think I trust anyone more on this planet other than Jesus um, to be my wife. But, but when you trust someone, you don't have to know all the details, <laughs> you know? Um, sometimes I can tell my wife to go, you know, we can talk about her doing something. And, I, you know, it's just like, it, it, whatever, you know, you just, I just trust her, right? And it's, it, it can just happen quick. Um, when, when I trust someone, when, when they fail or, or it doesn't, the situation doesn't look like I think it should look like, um, I, I'm, you know, generally I believe the best because I trust this person. When I trust this person, I don't have to be in control, right? I mean, I can just, I can just know that, that they're taking care of it, and that gives me peace of mind. When you, when you trust someone, even if you don't understand what they're doing or even why they're doing it, when you trust someone, you don't have to have the control. You don't have to continually check up on things. You just trust them, and it's an awesome thing. And what builds trust but our promises? And what I want to encourage you to think about is it's not just the statements that we make that say, I promise. Really, any time we say we're going to do something or any time we say we're not going to do something, that essentially is a promise. It has the same effect. It will either build trust with whoever we make the promise to, or it will damage trust. And you and I cannot afford to damage trust. Now, as I talk about this, perhaps as we get into this this morning, you're going to feel maybe convicted, just like, oh my gosh. Well, let me just help you understand. I, I'm in the same boat as you. I understand this. I don't keep all of my promises all the time. I don't always do what I say I'm going to do. I, I've got things on my mind right now that um, you know, I, I haven't followed through on. I, sometimes I drop the ball on that. I can be very excited in the beginning, but just not follow through. 
But if we're going to talk about the real you, it's important to talk about our follow-through, right? Because those promises that we make are building the trust, and it's, it's building us. See, here, here's the thing about keeping promises and building trust. It's not just the trust that we build with each other. It's the trust we build with ourselves. See, every time we keep a promise, we don't just build trust with someone else. We build self-confidence. We, we in, in such a way, we, we cast a vote internally that, yes, we can be consistent. We can be reliable. We are trustworthy. But the opposite is true. Whenever we fail to keep a promise, whenever we break our own promise, whether it's not something you know, we, we give someone else, but just a promise we made to ourselves, when we break that, we begin to lose a part of our identity. We begin to doubt ourselves. We think to ourselves, well, if, if I can't even keep my own word to my own self, am I really worth trust? Am I a trustworthy person? So it's so important. So how are we going to learn about trust? How are we going to learn about promises this morning? Well, of course, we're going to look at the words of Jesus. Jesus said something interesting, really, about promises and about keeping our word. And if we're going to be the people that God has created us to be, if we're going to be the real us in a way that honors God, it's going to be so important to follow what Jesus said. If you want to follow along with me, you can do so in um, the book of Matthew Chapter 5, verse 33 through 37. This is a passage in what is known as the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus, uh, he, he, he covers so many relevant topics. But in this particular passage of Scripture, uh, Jesus continues to rightfully interpret what God has wanted all along. And, and a lot of things Jesus does in this is he, he says things like, you've heard it said, like, You've been told before that this is how you're supposed to handle this, but I'm telling you that what God really wants you to do is handle it this way. Now that might seem like, you know, well, Jesus, that, that's a, you know, say that you're, you know, really rightfully interpreting thing, that, that, that's putting you on equal playing field with God. And we wouldn't really need to believe Jesus about that, but Jesus predicted his resurrection and he pulled it off. And so when someone does that, you should believe everything they say. And that's why we trust Jesus. That's why we trust that when he says something, it's for real. Because he said he was going to die on the cross, or you know, he was going to get crucified, he would, he would rise again, and he did. So he's never lied to us, and we can trust everything he says. It's, it's an awesome thing. All right, so Jesus, again, he's saying, you've heard it told before, this is what I'm going to tell you. Look at what Jesus says here. He says this, again, you have heard it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. So, you know, now it's going to use the word oath or vow, uh, but in our vernacular, we, we typically, we, we might say vows for like marriage, and we, we may not say oath, you know, I will take an oath. I pretty, but, but really what we talk about is promises, right? We, we look at somebody and we say, I promise you. I promise you I'm going to be there. I promise you I won't do that anymore. I promise. And Jesus is really talking about this. He's saying, you know, you've heard it said that you should not break a promise. You should not break an oath or a vow that you've made. But then Jesus is going to address a practice to them. And he's going to say, you, you guys really need to do away with that. Listen to what he says. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven for it is God's throne, comma. He, Jesus is saying, listen, don't even do this kind of, you know, dramatic thing. Don't go out on a limb and, and, and swear an oath at all. And, it, and, and certainly don't do it by heaven, you know, because that's God's throne. That, I, mean, I mean, why would you bring God into a decision that you're about to make and you know that you don't always have it... Um, in you to, to accomplish it. He says, don't get God involved in your promises that you know that you could break or, or that might not come true. He says this, um, also, do not swear by the earth, for it is God's footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. He, 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 he's common in this practice. You know, when, when someone back in that day really wanted you to believe what they had to say, it, you know, 
swear by an oath. You know, I swear to you, I take an oath by heaven uh, today in a funny way. You know, we, we might we might call that, you know, a pinky promise or a double pinky promise. Or I, I swear on my mama's grave. What, let me just tell you, um, please don't ever do that. Just period. I, it just, you know, I don't know who your mom is, maybe. Uh, but please don't swear by her grave. Come on now. That's your mom. That's a special thing. Please don't do that, <laughs> just in general. Uh, but Jesus says, you don't need to be doing all these elaborate things to convince other people that you're trustworthy. Jesus has another alternative. And listen to what he says. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything, anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Now, we're, we're used in our culture, we're used to maybe saying things like, I promise, I promise you, I promise you it's going to be different this time. I promise you we're going to do that this time. I promise you that next time it's going to be better. We make all these promises. And Jesus has a very interesting take on it. He says, you know, you really want to be trustworthy. You really want to be a person of a personal integrity. You really want people to, to just, you know, not have to second guess you and, and just have peace of mind when you're handling something. You don't have to make it so elaborate. You don't have to pinky promise. You don't have to swear you, this oath. You don't have to make this big deal. Really, all you got to do is just say that you were going to do and do what you were going to say or what you said. And then when you can't, just simply say no. Do not overpromise, underdeliver. Right? Just say yes, just say no, and stand by your word. What's interesting about Jesus is Jesus doesn't encourage us to make promises. According to Jesus, according to Jesus, there's no special oath or promise that should be required for people to trust us. Just our simple word. That's what it means to be a Christian. I know we have broken so many promises. I've broken so many promises. I've said so many things that I was going to do and I never did it. Or I said so many things I wasn't going to do and I ended up doing it. I know it's convicting and it's convicting to me too. But the words of Jesus have us look in the mirror and say, look, what's going on? Are you saying what you're going to do and following through? Or are you trying to get people to trust you, but you're not doing the most basic things? Listen, this is a part of the real you and the part of real me. If we're going to give people the gift, a precious gift of trust, if we're going to avoid the damage that comes when we don't follow through with what we've said we're doing, if we're going to be people of integrity, we're going to need to keep our promises. And it's not by even making promises. It's just simply by keeping our word. I want to just leave you with a couple ideas here. Um, a question, and, and it comes with an application, because I want you to think about this. How have you been affected by the promises others have kept or broken to you? Spend some time thinking about the impact that other people's promises have made to you? Were there people that kept your promises? Uh, I just want to say for this, my parents were always good, uh, to my knowledge, for keeping their promises. In fact, um, when I was growing up, the words I promise or I promise you, they were like magic words around my house. Um, my mom and dad didn't always do what I wanted them to do, obviously, um, but if I knew, I knew, if I could ever get them to say the words, I promise, like, I could take it to the bank. And and so I didn't grow up with that kind of distrust. I'm just thankful for mom, Larry and Wanda, thank you for you, for doing that. It, it meant something positive in our family when I was growing up. And so it's, it's made an impact to me. I want to pass on the same thing to Jonah. And, and I want, you know, if Kennedy can see me, I want to do the same thing. I want to always keep my promises. I want to keep my promises to my wife. Do I do that always? No, obviously no, I, I don't. But that's the goal, right? And, and think about how good it feels when somebody has 
given their promise to you, and they've kept that promise. Now, maybe you have some people in your life that have broken promises, and when you read that, that the first thing you think of is not a positive example, but a negative example of, of how someone hurt you, and they, they just failed. And it can be very small and, and kind of simple, not even a big deal, but it could be your marriage. It could be something really, really big where somebody promised you something and they didn't follow through. Let me give you just some instruction, regardless of whether you have a positive answer to this question or a negative, at least you're thinking about the power of our promises. Here, here's my instruction to you. Forgive those that broke them and express gratitude to those who kept them. Right? Sometimes you're just going to need to forgive people. And, and when I say forgive... Um, think of that in terms of money and, and, and financial. Think of that as a financial term. Um, to forgive someone's debt financially is not to say that it never happened. Um, it just simply means, you know what, you don't owe me anymore. I'm canceling that debt. And some of you, if you've had promises broken and it's been so intense in your life, you may just simply need to forgive. And forgive doesn't mean that what they did doesn't didn't matter, or it wasn't bad, or they weren't responsible. That's not what it means. To forgive is simply to say, I'm not, I, me, I'm not going to hold you against that anymore. And you say, well, George, you don't know what I've been through. I, I understand that. But here's the thing. When you go to Jesus and confess your sin, he forgives you, regardless of what you've done. So if God can forgive you through the person of Jesus Christ, can you really not forgive someone else? Let me ask it a different way. Is what someone else has done to you, is that any worse than what you have done to God? Is it any more than what you've done to God? So if God will forgive you, then why can't you forgive someone else? Now, if there's someone you've had a positive thing, you know, just pick one person. Pick one person that have kept their promise and, and just text them, call them, whatever. Just say, you know what, hey, you've kept this particular promise to you. It might not have been a big deal to you, but it was a gift to me, and I'm thankful that you kept your promise. Express gratitude. Here's, here's the other thing, um, another question I want to give you. What are some things you said you would do that you haven't followed through on, and I'm going to say yes, right? <laughs> I don't want to still give you a chance. I want to give myself a chance, right? I don't want to just assume that we're just all failures and it's all over. Let, let's, just, let's just ask this question. What are some things you said, I've said, that we would do that we haven't followed through on yet? Listen, the real you, <laughs> the one who follows through, that's the only you that really matters. And we all need to take a good look at ourselves and ask, is there any outstanding things that I mentioned that I threw out there to my wife, to my kids, to my coworkers, to my boss, um, to my friends? Is there anything I just I threw out there and maybe it wasn't a big deal to me at the time, or maybe it's you know time has passed and it, it's maybe not a big deal, but I just haven't followed through yet. Jesus would look back at us and say, you know what? Follow through, follow through. Just let your yes be yes and your no be no. You know, don't pretend and, and, and don't try to get people to trust you if you, you haven't demonstrated to them um, that you're trustworthy. And, and here, here's really my, my encouragement to that. Start following through, beginning with small things first. A couple things I think may, may be helpful with this. Begin with small things first because, you know, hopefully when you knock out some small things, um, you can you can really start to gain momentum. And, and when I say small things, it could just be as simple as pick up your clothes and put them in the laundry basket. Take out the trash. Um, send that email at work. Um, make that phone call at work. Submit that project that you know uh, it, it wasn't that big of an item, but you know you just you just needed to do it. Um, you know, for us, whatever we've said we do, you make that purchase. Um, you know, make that appointment, whatever it is, and it might just be small. If you told somebody you were going to do it, just follow through and do the small things. And as you begin to build some momentum doing the small things, one after the other, then you can work on the big things, right? But don't overwhelm yourself. Just start with something small. And let me just say this. Let me <laughs> say this. It could be that something that you think is really small and not really insignificant could really make somebody's day. Sometimes in relationships, and I learned this from um, Dr. Stephen Covey, 
Uh, sometimes in relationships, um, the small things are actually the big things. We just lost track of them. They weren't big to us, but they were big to someone else. Now, as we finish today, I want you to understand that Christianity is not about having it all together. It's just about learning to give Jesus all the pieces. As I talk about how convicting this is, the reality is, is that, you know what, we've all fallen short in this area. We've all said things that we're going to do. Sometimes we attach the word I promised to it. Sometimes we just didn't. But according to Jesus, anytime we say it out loud, anytime we say yes or we say no to something, Jesus requires us to stick with it. And I want you to know you can't do it alone, right? But here's the beautiful thing about Christianity. Christianity is not about having it all together. It's not about being perfect, although that's what God requires. He also understands that we can't be perfect in and of ourselves. And so Christianity is about learning to give Jesus all the pieces, all of our broken promises, all of our falling short, and saying, Jesus, can you help me? And if you're watching this and you're not a Christian, Here's what I know is true about you. You want someone to keep their promises to you. And I would even imagine that you probably want to be a trustworthy person to other people. And that, I think, really could begin for you by developing a relationship with a person who has never, ever, ever let you down. I mean, as Christians, we are staking our entire eternity on whether or not Jesus will come through on his promises. And we know that we can trust him because he always kept his promises, especially the one about rising from the dead. So we're going to enter into a time of prayer. And if you don't know Jesus, I just hope that you would understand that promises are important. And, and maybe your first step is by putting your faith in the promise keeper of all time. But if you're not there, let's say you're a Christian and you've been following Jesus, but like me, you listen to this and you're like, man, you know, I just need to get better with that. I need to tighten up. I need to, you know, I, there's just some things that I just need to knock out. I just need to take care of it. Because if, if I'm going to be a real person of integrity, if that's the real me, then my promises and my word, like that's important, right? And you just, <laughs> I just need help. I just need help. Then, then, then take your failures and take your successes and take everything and give it to Jesus and ask him, Lord, will you help me do better in this area? I can't do it without your strength, but you're the promise keeper. You're the great promise keeper. Help me to follow through and let that be a part of who I really am. Let's say a word of prayer together and we'll finish. Lord Jesus, thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us, Lord. I pray that through all of this, you continually uh, remind us, Lord, that we need you. And we can trust you because you are faithful. So if there's people watching that don't have their faith in you, Lord, I pray that they put their faith in you, that they choose to trust you based on the cross and the resurrection. They ask for forgiveness of their sin and salvation that comes through Jesus Christ alone. For the rest of us, Lord, as we're praying right now, uh, I pray for all the needs that are going on. But I also, Lord, I pray for, for us that... As Christians, Lord, we, we need to be people of integrity. We want the real us to be the one that matters and to be the one that is that is out there with our family, our coworkers, and everyone. And so, Lord, we, we understand. We, we fall short of this so many times. But Lord, help us get back on track with following through. Even if it's a small thing, Lord, it could be a big thing to someone else. So please help us take steps toward this. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thank you again uh, for joining us. Uh, Lord willing, we will be back here on Facebook Live next Sunday for part three of The Real You. Um, and, of course, we do gather on Wednesday nights for Bible study as well, and you're certainly welcome to do that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful, blessed day. Um, may you connect with Jesus uh, to help you through this time and to give him glory because that's the ultimate reason we were created. I love you. Have a great day.